Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSIC Math Tutor. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how to draw a frequency polygon. And so we start first by asking ourselves, what is a frequency polygon? A frequency polygon is a polygonal graph. A polygonal graph means that it derives from a polygon. A polygon is closed and is made from straight lines. Therefore, a polygonal graph must be made from straight lines and it must be closed as well. So the, the frequency polygon will be made from straight lines and it will be closed. It's, it's closed on the y-axis, all right? The area of the graph gives the total frequency. That's, in, that's important in, as to how it works. And it shows the midpoints and the frequencies of class intervals. Frequency polygons are used to represent group distributions. And so we can use it to represent discrete or continuous data because those can be represented on a group distribution. And what we need to draw it are our midpoint and the frequency of each interval. And once you have a midpoint, um, your midpoint and your frequency, you have your xy coordinates that you need to draw your your um, frequency polygon. Let's look at an example of an already drawn frequency polygon. So notice that you have the coordinates here which correspond to the midpoints. And notice that it is closed at the ends. So it's closed here on the x-axis and it's also closed here on the x-axis. Very importantly, notice too that your x-axis has a scale. So these are not random numbers that are placed on the x-axis. These are not the midpoints that are drawn there. This is an actual scale, two centimeters to five units. Uh, questions normally tell you which scale to use. And in this case, we're looking at one centimeter to five units on the vertical axis. So these are important. Both axes must have scales for it to be a frequency polygon. It can be superimposed on a histogram, but that's a lesson for another time. So what we need, as I said, are the midpoints and the frequency of each. And once we have that, we can draw our, um, our frequency polygon. Well, let's look at a question from CXE. It says a class of 32 students participated in running a 400 meter race, and these are their times to the nearest second. So this is grouped into a frequency table, group distribution, and we have found the midpoints already. These are the midpoints. How you find the midpoint again is that you take the two limits that you have there, so you take the 50 plus the 54, you add them and divide by two, that gives you 104. And 104 divided by two gives you 52. So that's how we find our midpoint. And we continue to find all the midpoints of each group. Now, once you have your midpoints and you have your frequency, then these are the points that we're going to use. Um, 52 to three, 57 to four, etc to draw our, our, our frequency polygon. To close the frequency polygon, we need an empty interval at the beginning and at the end. So we can put an empty interval here. The interval before this one would be um, 45 to 49, and that would have a midpoint of 47. I'm just gonna drop it here, and a frequency of zero. Also, the one after this would be 85, to 89 and that would also have a midpoint of 87 with a frequency of zero so these are important to close it and so let's go ahead and now set up our axes oh there are some questions here that can be answered it says using the raw scores determine the range range as you know is the highest uh, minus lowest and that has nothing to do with our graph but since it's there let's answer it Highest minus lowest, the highest score in this thing uh, here, we see that the highest score is 83 and the lowest score is, is 51. And so we can just subtract those to get our range. So it's 83, take away 51, and that gives us um, 32. So that's the range. And now we are going to draw our histogram using two centimeters to five seconds on the horizontal or x-axis and one centimeter to one student on the vertical axis. So let's go. 
um, let's set up our graph. In setting up your graph, you may start by using the graph in portrait position, and you may realize that it doesn't work um, because it can't hold. So always consider which direction you turn your graph. So this one is turned in the, in the landscape position. So we're gonna set up our vertical axis and one centimeter to one student. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The highest frequency is seven, so that's good. And then we need to accommodate the 47, so we can start at 45. I'm not gonna start the 45 here. I'm gonna skip a box and start the 45 here, and then 45, 50, two centimeters to five, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. And that would cover all of this. So remember, you are using two centimeters to represent five units. And what that means is that two tiny boxes would have to represent one because there are 10 tiny boxes here representing five. So two tiny boxes represent one. So importantly now, 47, this is 45, so that's 46, and that's 47, that's 47 to zero, right there. And then the next one would be 52. This is 50, so 52 to three would be here. And then 57 to four, that's 55. So 57 to four would be right here. Um, 62 to six. here and the next one seven to six to seven to three this is 65 so we go 67 to three and that's where that point would be uh 72 goes up to seven and that's where that one is and 77 75 77 goes up to four that's the coordinate for that one. The 82, 82 goes to five. So that one is already marked. And the last one, 87 to zero. So this is 85. So that's 87 to zero right there. And now our job is simply to connect these with straight lines. So you would take your ruler <clears throat> and you would connect these um, points with straight lines. So I'm gonna start with this one first. Connect here, connect there, connect here. So you take your ruler and you line up your points and you draw, make sure that you're using a ruler. You cannot draw it free-handed because it is a polygon and you cannot draw a polygon with your free hand because the lines have to be straight. And so here we go. And this is what you get when you set it up. Now to close it, some persons like to use broken lines. Other persons just use a solid line. Doesn't matter which one you use. So we're going to close it. So we close it on the x-axis from that end. And we also close it on that end. So this is your frequency polygon. This is how it's drawn. And you, this would be time in seconds. Let's not um, ignore that important thing. Time in seconds. And over here, it would say number of students because your axes should be labeled. So number of students and time in seconds. Um, that's pretty much it. That's how you draw a frequency polygon. Thank you for watching. Until next time, continue working hard and the best wishes for your examinations.